Julian, we were just hearing about so-called competitors like Microsoft, like Slack. Are they competitors? I don't think of them as competitors. Um, the mission of Workplace is really to connect everyone in the company, every company, every industry, especially people who've never been connected before mm. because they never had a desk, never had an email, uh, never had a PC. And I think only Workplace and Facebook in general have that ambition to connect basically 4.5 billion people who are employed with a working mobile device. I don't see anyone else going after that market of connecting absolutely everyone in the company. And how does that empower the, the barista at Starbucks or in the, you know, what a, what the, the front of sales point in, in Walmart, for example? Well, I think it gives them a voice for the first time. They understand who they work for. They understand the values of the company, the culture of the company. They can be identified as talents. They can exchange uh, with their colleagues from other stores, from the HQ. So I think when, when, when you give everyone a voice like that, you, you ultimately uh, change how the company is run. And it gives opportunity to people who did not necessarily have opportunities before. You're, you've just been on the acquisition trail, a relatively small one, you say. But Red Kicks, they um, enabling you to what, have email, to have, have more the enterprise side of connectivity. How's it going to integrate? Yeah, it's a great team, great company, great IP, a team that has been in the SaaS business for a long time. The CEO used to be the, the VP of product at Jive. So it was, a, it was a great opportunity for us to accelerate our engineering effort by acquiring that, uh, that company in, in Israel. And what does it say about the purpose of where Workplace wants to go, the, the ambitions you have, how significant you be, could be for your parent company? Well, I think it will help us, thanks to the IP they have developed, to move away from things like mailing lists, newsletters that people don't really like to use, but still mm. have to use sometimes. So I think the, this acquisition will help us to, uh, to accelerate that transition and to uh, um, maybe accelerate the adoption of Workplace when we launch in a new company and accelerate the adoption across, you've got 30,000 companies already. Yeah. How global is that spread? How, how are you making those connections to get inside more businesses? Well, we, we are very busy scaling the business. Uh, we opened an office in the US, in Australia, in Japan, in Paris, in Brazil. Uh, we truly have that ambition to connect everyone, so we have to be present um, where our customers are, and we can use the Facebook infrastructure to do that. Um, but it's a global business, and we want to make sure that we are the best possible place to serve our customers. You have subscription model. It's not one that's in the rest of Facebook. How, how has that worked? And also, you're offering it to not-for-profits who aren't going to pay that subscription as well. No, workplace for good, which is Workplace for Non-Profit, is free. Uh, but companies who pay for Workplace Premium, we also have a free product called Workplace Standard, but companies who pay for, for, for Workplace Premium pay $3 per month, which is, as you said, a new business model for Facebook, but it's the business model of SaaS. Um, and we want people to understand very clearly that Workplace is part of Facebook, but it's a, it's a very different product, uh, mm. it's a very different business model, and so we needed to, uh, to find a way to create like a SaaS brand within Facebook Inc. You have to think of Workplace as a, as a startup, a SaaS startup, the first SaaS startup within Facebook. You're part of Facebook. The parent company can obviously be a driver of growth, but also in sometimes a hindrance, particularly at the moment when there's concerns about privacy, about data. How are you having those conversations with the businesses that you're talking to and, and ensuring that they feel completely at ease with the product? Yeah, we, we've, we've observed how um, Google, for example, built a SaaS business with Google Cloud or how Amazon with AWS did the same thing, how a consumer tech company created a very successful SaaS business. And I think we are going through the same journey. We had to create our own brand. We had to go through all the possible security and privacy certifications you can imagine, the ones you need to be able to serve some of our customers like banks, financial institutions, governments, SOC 2, SOC 3, ISO. So it's a new muscle for us that we are building. Uh, but at the end of the day, companies know that Facebook is one of the few companies in the world that is building its own infrastructure, um, data centers, the software, the hardware. So we have a lot of credibility as a tech company. We had to build our credibility as a SaaS vendor, being able to serve the most uh, regulated and conservative companies in the world.